Hello class, hopefully everyone's been having a great day so far. For today's lesson, we're going to be learning about electron configuration. As with all previous lessons, the first thing we're going to do is break down a word. So hopefully, by now, you've already opened your three ring binder and you've found the vocabulary section so you can break down this word with me. Remember in the future, I'm not going to break down this, I'm not going to model how to break down this word for you, but we're going to be doing it before class and then discussing it in, within our small groups, okay? So the word for today is configuration. The first part about configuration that we want to break down is con, right? So what does con mean? Con means together. That means together or with, right? So if you've been watching the news recently or been reading newspapers, a uh, word that you've heard with a uh, con in it is Congress, right? Congress is all over the news about how they can't work together. So if we were to give them a name today, it might be seagrass. Google that if you want the joke. <laughs> all right, so uh, moving on. All right, so the next part of configuration that we're going to look into is the part fig. And what does fig mean? Well, fig means uh, to sh shape or form. Okay? Or form. Whoops, forgot an R. The last part of configuration that we're going to look into is the suffix ION. Now, what does ION stand for? Well, ION means an action. It stands for an action. Okay? It means to do. So, with these three separate meanings, how can we put these together? So, if we put these together, we're going to come to an idea that configuration means uh, to shape or form, the action of shaping or forming together. Okay? Now, what you might ask now is, what shaping, what is forming together? Right? Well, that comes from when we put electron in front of that. So when we say electron configuration, what we're saying is how electrons shape or form together um, an atom. Okay? So now we're going to get into the chemistry part of it. And what we're going to start it with is a little bit of technical terms that we're going to be able to use further um, to describe an atom or an element. So the first, the first term that we're going to talk about is principal quantum number. Don't let these words scare you into thinking that it's a complex idea. Because the next thing that scientists have done are we make this so our numbers are in order. So it's just like counting. We go one, two, three, four. And for this, I'll go up to five, right? So for the second part about electron configuration, a little terminology that we're going to use is called the sublevel. And unfortunately, the sublevel doesn't go in numbers. The sublevel uses letters. So the first sublevel is S. The second is P. The third is D, and the fourth is F. Unfortunately, these are not alphabetical. So the easiest thing, the easiest way I remember these is made a little bit of a mnemonic device. So my my device to remember the order of these sublevels is salty pizza disgust. Okay, so if that works for you, awesome. To demonstrate how to use this new language, I am going to go over an example with you of how to write the electron configuration of manganese. And the first thing that I want you to look at for manganese is I want you to think about how many electrons there are in manganese. So if we look at the periodic table, we find the atomic number of manganese is 25, 
and we know that the atomic number is equal to the number of electrons and protons. So we're going to say manganese has 25 electrons. Okay. The first thing we're going to do when writing the electron configuration is go to the periodic table and start in the upper left hand corner. The first thing we'll see here is we're going to start at the number one. We're going to start with the first principal quantum number. Okay. And then if we were to kind of imagine that as helium moves over to fill this blue, these blue columns, um, we are going to see that each, you know, the blue group here contains two elements. So we know now that the S sublevel can hold two electrons. Okay, now that this row has been accounted for, we move down a row. When we move down a row, we also move down a quantum number. But once we move to the left, we start over again with the sublevels. So again, we have S, and we know that that can hold two electrons. Moving over to the right, we hit boron. And boron starts the P group. So we're going to write 2P. You might be wondering why we don't write 1P. Well, the reason for this is that as you move down a sublevel, you also have moved down a quantum number from the previous one. So since S starts at quantum number 1, P starts at quantum number 2. Okay? And to know how many electrons are able to fit in this P sublevel, we're going to count. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons in the P sublevel. Sub now we're going to move down and over to the left, start over again. So we go down 3, and again we start at the beginning, sublevel S, and 2. Move over here to the 3P group. We know we're not here at manganese yet, so we know that it takes all those electrons, 6, 3P6. Then we move down, start over again at 4S2. And then we're going to go over, but we notice that we don't have to go all the way over because manganese is already is half, about halfway through. Okay? So what we're going to write here is 3D. We now hit the this brown group as the D level. The problem with that that I found is that it doesn't it doesn't seem to make sense. Why is why is it 3D instead of 4D? We've moved down four rows. Why isn't it 4D? Well, the reason is just like the P group. For each sublevel that we move down, we move down one qu principal quantum number from the previous sublevel. And the reason why the D levels aren't moved up to here, so that it makes more sense, is take some complex physics knowledge. Um, but for our purposes, we can explain it by thinking that electrons actually prefer to fill the 4S sub or group before they get into the 3D. Okay? So that's why we write 4S before we write 3D. Now we have to count how many electrons we need in this D shell to get to magnesium. So we start over. We count one, two, three, four, five in. So we write the little five above that D. So here is our complete electron configuration for magnesium. So for tomorrow, what I want you to do is take a couple minutes and I want you to try to write the electron configuration for gallium. Um, we, tomorrow we will be meeting in our small groups and we'll be discussing what we got for the electron configuration of gallium and we will be also writing the electron configurations for other elements and going over with our group how we got the, how we got the correct configurations. See you tomorrow.